Hi. So in this lecture and the next lecture, we are going to discuss energy storage devices. So we have already talked about the energy production devices. Now let's briefly discuss the energy storage devices and their manufacturing. So what is a storage device by definition? Hmm. Any apparatus which can store a certain form of energy it doesn't have to be electrical energy. It can be chemical energy. It can also be thermal energy. Not only that this device stores this form of energy, but it also releases it on demand, then such a device is known as energy storage device. We will be discussing mainly the electrical energy storage devices because that is our, uh, that is relevant to our course. Okay, so the most common examples of energy storage or electrical energy storage devices that you must have, uh, of course, you have seen many of them in your in your laptop, in your uh, mobile phones, battery, hmm. you are able to charge the battery. And at some point, whenever you use your computer or your uh, phone, then you utilize that energy, right? So battery is the most common examples. You also know about the capacitors. So a lot of electrical appliances, for example, they have capacitors. Why do they have capacitors? Initially, when you want to start them, then they need a lot of energy to start and typically you will have a capacitor for the startup. Hmm. So you also have capacitors. There's also something known as super capacitor, which is nothing but a capacitor, but with much higher efficiency that we'll discuss in the next lecture. So this lecture is mainly about the batteries. Okay, um, so before the battery, most of you might already know what is an electrochemical cell. Hmm. When you have a chemical reaction and because of that chemical reaction, there is a flow of electrons. So such reactions are known as electrochemical reactions. Hmm. So and the medium in which these ions and electrons flow, these materials are known as electrolytes. And this entire setup where you have two electrodes, one positive, one negative, and there is an electrolyte. And then there is a flow of electron due to certain chemical reaction. This setup is known as an electrochemical cell. Okay, now if I take these electrochemical cells and many of them and I connect them, hmm, like how you can see in this uh, this picture. Hmm, so I connect each many such cells, let's say N cells, and then I put all of them inside a box, then that becomes your battery. It's as simple as that. Hmm, so when your electrolyte is liquid, then it looks something like this. When your electrolyte is solid or semi-solid. Hmm, so electrolytes can also be semi-solid and solid because the as long as the material allows the flow of ions, it can be an electrolyte. Doesn't because typically when we first read about electrochemical cells, we usually think about you know um, potassium chloride or something, some liquid material which is uh, which is the medium for the ions. It doesn't have to be. Hmm. Okay, so now these are solid state batteries where your electrolyte is either solid or at least you know semi-solid type of material, paste type of material. Hmm. But now we can have different designs. Hmm. We can have electrochemical cells, one, uh, you know, connected to the other, like you see in these first two images. We can also just make a circular cylindrical structure where you have various layers. Hmm. Now these layers will have anode and cathode, and they also will have a separator, which is a membrane that allows the flow of electron from one electrode to another, hmm. which blocks the ions, allows only the electrons. So these are called separator materials or membranes. So you can have various layers one on top of each other. In fact, most of the solid state batteries that you buy in the market, they look something like this. But you must have also seen the battery in a car. Hmm. Those are larger batteries. And in most cases, they have liquid electrolytes. So you have different kind of batteries for different purposes. Now, when you think about a, um, a electricity generation plant, hmm, whether it is a thermal plant or whether it's a hydro power plant, you actually need to, you cannot just always, uh, you know, release all the energy or the electricity that you produce. You also often store this energy and that's why the energy storage devices are very important to us because you will often store these energies and you'll have typically lead based batteries, which are really huge in size and multiple batteries, you know, a lot of them in number. And that's how we store the energy for a while. Hmm. Now, however, the construction of batteries, also the basic principles of batteries, the electrochemical uh, principles of batteries that basically form a completely other course. Hmm. So in one video or, or a few lectures, I cannot completely describe how to manufacture all the batteries, but you just need to understand the basic principle. And one more thing which I would like to explain here is why we are trying to go from large scale to micro and nano scale batteries nowadays. 
Okay, so now this was battery in general. Now one specific type of battery that all of you must have heard of is the lithium ion battery. What is lithium? Lithium is the lightest metal which has the highest energy density or the batteries made of it have the highest energy density per weight. So what happens is this tiny lithium ion can go inside a certain material and come out. Go inside and come out. That is what we call charge and discharge. Charge and discharge. Hmm. So based on the lithium ion, we now make charged rechargeable batteries. Hmm. So these are known as the lithium ion batteries. Okay. Now, as I mentioned already, we need to make them smaller and smaller. Why do we want to do that? Hmm. Uh, this is an image of lithium ion battery. So here you see anode and you see cathode and these little red balls, they are lithium ions. Hmm. and elemental lithium also in the middle they are lithium ions and when you charge it then your ions go from anode to cathode and then when you use the, uh, use the computer let's say when you ut utilize the battery then they come back so charge and discharge and this you can do multiple times now of course you know that sometimes your ga battery is damaged hmm. Or after some time, you lose your battery life. It's not as good as it used, used to be. So these are all caused by the mechanical deformations, sometimes because of the leakage of certain chemicals. Hmm. Um, why will you have a, a, a mechanical deformation? Now you see the cathode, these lines and the wavy structures. What I've shown here is a disordered carbon material, which has some crystalline structure and some disordered structure, which means that you have carbon sheets but they are not perfectly aligned like in the case of graphite hmm. so they, these kind of structures can take the lithium ion and leave it back can take the lithium ion and then send it back but after a very long after several cycles of charge and discharge what will happen is you might have mechanical cracks in your cathode itself in your material carbon material itself hmm. similarly you can also have cracks in the anode which is typically any lithium salt. So these kind of mechanical deformations actually ca can cause your battery to go bad. Hmm. Okay, we'll come to that later. Okay, now I was saying that we are making the battery smaller and smaller. And why are we doing that? Because A, now the devices are becoming smaller. Hmm. Can you imagine that your mobile phone has a car-like battery? No, right? If for smaller devices, you need smaller battery. Similarly, if you have a flexible device, now we talked about flexible electronics in our previous lecture. So for flexible electronics, you want a flexible battery, right? If you want to wear some watch, let's say, which measures uh, everything about you, that watch cannot have a rigid battery, right? Because you want to wear it, so you also need a flexible battery. So depending on the devices and also the fact that the sizes of de uh, devices are uh, reducing, we need smaller and smaller batteries and that is why most of the new research in the field of battery is on the micro and nano scale batteries and that is also one more reason that we learned microfabrication in our previous lectures okay so um, as i mentioned uh, that in a, a cathode in a in a lithium ion battery is a lithium salt or lithium metal oxide and anode is is made of carbon now, typically you will select disordered carbon materials, but you also uh, select graphite. And this is again a completely different area of research. But what you need to do is you need to choose a material in such a way that you want to, that would help you minimize the deformation, minimize the mechanical crack formation and propagation. And also, yeah, one more thing there is that um, the batteries heat up sometimes. So you also want to make sure that the material that you select, uh, that can withstand some um, you know, thermal shocks hmm, or thermal fatigue because you will have um, multiple cycles of the battery. So you should be able to have to select your material in such a way that it can also withstand thermal uh, forces. Okay. Now, what are the electrolytes? I already told you these are the materials that are filled. Hmm, that th this is the medium where your ions and electrons flow. Now, in the case of lithium ion batteries, the kind of electrolytes that you have can be liquid organic materials or they can also be some polymeric material you must have also heard uh, something called lithium polymer batteries nowadays hmm. so you basically have a mixture of polymer and lithium ions or lithium salts lithium materials these polymers also act as an electrolyte 
Now, each one of them has their disadvantage. So the liquid organic materials, you will often see some, sometimes, you know, you must have heard about the accidents related to batteries. So that happens because of these, the flammability of these electrolytes. Hmm. So liquid materials, of course, it's more dangerous when you handle them. And it's also not, you know, convenient to handle when your battery has some liquid filled into it. Also, the semi-solid polymeric materials can be a problem. So the, if you don't handle these batteries properly or if they are not manufactured properly, then due to these defects, there can be there can be explosion in the batteries. OK, so this is the reason, of course, all the research is now moving towards the solid state batteries. Now, these solid state batteries can have various different types of electrolytes. Hmm. You can have organic materials, you can have inorganic materials. But the idea is that the material should be completely solid and you should be able you should have the flow of ions in the completely solid state of the material. What you also have is something known as composite electrodes. So you've already learned about the composite materials uh, recently. You can have a polymer based binder, let's say, hmm. and then you can have you can add another material to it or you can have the, the metal, uh, the lithium salts bound inside a polymer or a matrix. So you can have various different types of composite electrodes, composite materials. You can also have something known as metal organic frameworks or MOFs, commonly known as MOFs. So these are also certain uh, types of uh, certain examples of, uh, of solid um, electrolytes. You can have various ceramics and so on. Okay. So as I mentioned before, when you take all these materials, all these new class of materials, you want to minimize the size of your structure. Why do you want to do all of this? Because the smaller structures also have a much higher surface area. Now you can see all these electrochemical reactions, they are mainly surface reactions. Hmm. You want the lithium ion to have more and more surface area so that it can go inside and come out, go inside. If you have only one little bit of surface area, then you are kind of closing the door. It can only go in from here and come out of there. There is a multiple uh, you know, a large, large surface, surface area that means multiple doors. It can just enter from anywhere. So you will have more and more lithium ions that are, uh, you know, that are doing the charging and then they're coming back. So they're discharging. So in that sense, it's a good idea to have higher surface area. All as we reduce the device size, hmm, when we go from bulk to micro and then micro to nano, in a very small area, small footprint, we will we can have higher structures like let's say I make pillars in a very small area then entire area of that pillar is now available for the lithium ions so basically by reducing the size we are also increasing the surface area so when you're making a battery when you're uh, let's say doing research on on battery fabrication one thing that you need to do is you need to increase the surface area of your structure, whether it is by it is by creating porosity or by changing the structure, like I said, by pillar increasing the roughness of the surface. There are many methods by which you can you can increase the surface area. You need to select your materials in such a way that you minimize the explosion or flammability. Hmm. And of course, you need to make sure that um, that your material can withstand mechanical as well as thermal fatigue. Okay.